Hi, I'm Dr. Sabina Wilhelm, Chief of Psychology and Director at the Center for OCD and Related Disorders at Mass General Hospital, and I'm also a professor at Harvard Medical School. And these are Mass General Brigham's answers for the most commonly searched questions on OCD. What is obsessive compulsive disorder? Obsessive compulsive disorder is a psychiatric disorder. And people with obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD suffer from obsessions and or compulsions. And obsessions are recurrent thoughts, but they can also be images. And typically these obsessions cause a lot of anxiety, a lot of distress. And therefore the person tries to remove these obsessions, tries to get rid of these obsessions, typically by engaging in a compulsion. What are the most common obsessions and compulsions? Common obsessions include fears of contamination, fears of having lost something, or fears of having made a mistake, concerns with symmetry or exactness, and many people also have uh, concerns with recurrent violent or sexual or religious thoughts that they consider to be inappropriate. And then common compulsions include washing your hands again and again or cleaning something over and over again, checking things again and again to ensure that they were done uh, correctly, repeating something again and again until it feels right. But compulsions can also be mental. They can be, uh, for example, praying silently in order to prevent a feared event from happening or reviewing something again and again to ensure that it was done correctly. What are the triggers or symptoms for OCD? So triggers are what's happening prior to the OCD really starting. And then symptoms are the obsessions and compulsions that we tend to see in OCD. So for example, a trigger could be something like a doorknob or so. And then the obsession could be, oh, if I touch that doorknob, I'm going to get sick or I'm going to get my family member sick. And then the compulsion would be washing hands again and again. There can be so many different triggers for OCD because OCD is such a heterogeneous disorder. For example, a trigger could also be just seeing a person and then the individual might have a sexual obsession. So the obsession could be, what if I molest this person? And then the compulsion could be to pray over and over again to ask for forgiveness. How common is OCD and when does it start? OCD is a very common disorder. It affects about one to 2% of people in the general population. It has two peaks of onset. It can start in childhood and then another peak is uh, in early adulthood, but most individuals actually develop OCD before the age of 25. And once OCD starts, it's usually chronic. So it typically waxes and wanes, but it does not go away without treatment. What causes OCD? We don't know exactly what's causing OCD, but we think that genetics and biological factors and psychological factors and environmental factors might all be involved. With regard to genetics, we know that OCD runs in families. So if you already have a family member who has OCD, you are more likely to develop OCD yourself. Research also shows that certain areas of the brain are hyperactive in OCD. And people with OCD seem to have an imbalance in certain chemical messengers, also called neurotransmitters in the brain. And then with regard to psychological factors, we think that certain personality traits, for instance, high levels of perfectionism, might predispose somebody to develop OCD. We also think that certain environmental triggers can cause the onset of OCD. For example, a stressful life event or a psychological trauma might predispose somebody to develop OCD. What are the treatments for OCD? There are two gold standard treatments for OCD. One is a psychotherapy called cognitive behavior therapy that involves exposure and response prevention. And the other treatment is pharmacotherapy, typically with serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So cognitive behavior therapy usually starts with psychoeducation where people learn a little bit about their disorder. Then they do cognitive exercises that teach the patient to step back from their thoughts and consider another perspective. And then the behavioral exercises involve exposure 
meaning that the person learns to go back in the situation that they would ordinarily only endure with anxiety or that they would typically avoid. And then they do response prevention, meaning that they are refraining from doing rituals while they are in these situations. People always learn relapse prevention exercises. This is important so that they can maintain the gains that they made over the course of treatment. Cognitive behavior therapy is a short-term treatment. It usually takes about 16 to 20 sessions for patients to complete. And the results are pretty good. About 60 to 80% of patients respond to cognitive behavior therapy. Can people relapse after treatment? About 20% of people relapse after CBT that was initially successful. But if that happens, you often just need to remind yourself of what originally helped you during your treatment. So pay attention to your tool walks, re-engage in some of those treatment strategies. And if you can't do it on your own, that's okay. Just go back to your therapist. You might just need a few booster sessions and then you will be back on track. How is OCD different from wanting to do a good job or perform well? So there are so many people who will say, oh, I'm such a neat freak or I'm so OCD. And these are often people who really love it when things are clean and they really enjoy it when things are organized. But that's very different from the actual suffering that's associated with the real obsessions and compulsions in OCD. So if you are enjoying it, it's not OCD. How is OCD diagnosed? Well, OCD is typically diagnosed in a diagnostic interview with a mental health service provider. So they will just ask you questions about your obsessions and compulsions. There is no brain scan or blood test that's used to diagnose OCD. What are some common comorbidities with OCD? Many people with OCD have other disorders as well. And depressive disorders commonly co-occur with OCD. But people with OCD can have anxiety disorders or even eating disorders or, or other comorbidities too. There are also several disorders that look very much like OCD. Body dysmorphic disorder, for example, is a, a, a relative of OCD that shares many similarities. Other relatives of OCD are um, compulsive hair pulling, or also called trichotillomania, or excoriation disorders. That's when people pick their skin again and again. And hoarding disorder, where people acquire many things and have difficulty discarding them is also uh, considered to be a relative of OCD. So if you have OCD or if you have a family member with OCD, please know that there's hope. We have effective treatments for individuals with OCD. And if you need more information, please check out the website of the International OCD Foundation. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Wilhelm and at Mass General Brigham, we are here for you.